Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at some cheap Atmega MCUs that I got uh, from the AliExpress website from China. Um, are they real? Are they fake? Do they even work? Um, we'll hope to find all that out today. Now, if you look on the internet, you, you don't have to look far to see people uh, reporting problems with MCUs and ICs bought from China. There are stories of fakes, there are stories of uh, MCUs that work but are obviously counterfeit. There are MCUs that don't work at all. Um, it's what I normally would not buy IC, ICs from China, but these were so cheap. I thought, why not try? Let's see. Let's see what the fuss is about. See if we can actually see whether these things will work or not. Should be fun. Let's get started. Firstly, let's look at the packaging. Now, this is a real MCU. This is definitely real because I got it from Farnell. It's an Atmega 328P. Um, the, the same sort of thing that you find on the Arduino boards. Now, this. When you buy from Farnell, you'll get you'll get your MCUs in a packaging package like this. It's a plastic straight sort of pipe type thing. It's designed to hold the MCUs uh, in, a, in such a way that the pins can't bend. And this is this is a hard package. It would it would take even I mean even Royal Mail in the UK would have trouble breaking this. And I'm, I'm serious. They really can break just about anything. Now the ICs that I bought from China were a pack of five Atmega 8 16PU um, uh, MCUs and they arrived in just the typical sort of package you get from China, a bit of a flimsy sort of jiffy bag with the, the, the bare minimum of uh, bubble wrap inside. But wait, wait till you see how they actually package the MCUs, you're going to have a laugh at this. Here it is. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet. Now <laughs> the MCUs are basically just stacked on top of each other and wrapped in a bit of, well, it's a bit like cling film, a bit thicker than cling film. There is no ESD protection whatsoever. And I have no idea what I'm gonna find in terms of bent pins or not when I open this. Actually looking through, the pins look pretty well straight, but this, this is this is gonna be interesting. Let's, let's open this for the first time here and see what we've got. <laughs> so there, there we are. They're all stacked on top of each other. In, and the pins are all are remarkably straight. These, they're not, there isn't one with a bent pin at all by looks of things. I'm actually quite impressed. I think by pure fluke, they've managed to get away with building like a solid block of plastic here that's just got the metal pins down the side in such a way that um, they're pretty well protected. Um, <laughs> Despite the ridiculous look of the thing, it's actually worked. The thing they, it has arrived to me intact. Now, let's have a look at why I actually bought these things. I mean, it's, it's price, but let's, let's have a look at, at how cheap these things actually are. So here's the Atmega 8 uh, product listing at Farnell. Uh, this is Farnell's where I buy just about everything. Um, a guaranteed good, good quality kit. You know, you know that it's going to be good, and the, the delivery prices are reasonable. As you can see, one unit for an Atmega 8 at Farnell is two pounds thirty-nine. Now, I bought a pack of five from AliExpress, and uh, to get five here, including VAT, would be about fourteen pounds. So that, that's that's a fairly hefty price. Now let's compare that to AliExpress. There's the product listing from AliExpress. Now, the price you see here, $4.74, that's US dollars, not pounds, um, is for five pieces per lot. Now, if you've never, if you've never used um, AliExpress before, then it's, it's basically eBay, but it's, uh, it's, it's like the buy it now section of eBay. But they specialize in, in, in multiple pieces per lot. So rather, in eBay, you tend to just have uh, single, single price listings for one item and you can enter you know, multiple if you want to buy more than one. But AliExpress will actually physically list them in lots. So this is the one I bought, uh, $4.74 for five. Now that's, that, that's less than a dollar each and it includes shipping. Now I can't believe, I don't know how they do it in China, the Chinese government must be basically paying for everybody's shipping because I can't believe that they can ship around the world for less than, less than a dollar, which I mean, just in my head, that's probably about 60 or 70 pence um, for, uh, for each MCU. So I couldn't resist, I thought I'll get some, even if they turn out to be fake or they turn out to be blank slugs or something, it's worth a try. Let's let's have a look. Um, if they work, hey, bargain. Right, let's do a quick physical exam of these two MCUs um, because basically when you're looking for counterfeits, the um, the logo is often a dead giveaway. Uh, sometimes um, it's it's poorly aligned. The uh, the text is wrong. You even get misspellings occasionally, which is hilarious. But um, in this case, now here we've got the uh, the genuine Atmega 328 from Farnell on top. 
and um, it looks a bit battered and worse for wear because I've been prototyping with this for a while. I mean, the pins are sort of all out of alignment and uh, bits of solder on them and just scratch on top, but uh, no worries, it still, it still goes. Now, the first thing I noticed is that the, the genuine one is of a slightly darker colour. The plastic is, is more black, it's darker than the, than the one below, as you can see there. Now, the reason I, I point that out is because the, the date codes on these things are very close together. The genuine one has got a date code of 1438, which in Atmel speak means it was um, manufactured in the year of 2014 in the 38th week. And uh, this Atmega 8 down here, the, dod the potentially dodgy one, it was man it's got a date code of 1430, so it's manufactured apparently in uh, 2014 on the 30th week, only eight weeks apart from the 328. Now, that I, to me that would indicate that they really ought to be using the, probably the same or very close uh, materials to uh, to package it in and the fact that they're completely different in colour uh, does give me cause for concern but obviously I can't prove anything yet we're just looking at the physical the physical um, appearance of these things. Now the next thing I looked at was I put these things under the microscope to examine the logo very closely. Now the um, the logo is I don't know how they they put these things these logos onto the chips um, or what machine they do it but the logo isn't inked on it's either scratched or it's either you know engraved rather than scratched um, it's either engraved on or it's um, it's burnt in um, now when I looked at the uh, the Atmel the 328P here the the logo has clearly been um, scratched or burnt in with a single a single point it, it's basically just go, gone across and done the logo. Fine. So the, the, the this one was slightly different. The Atmega Eight. It looked like it had been scratched in with a machine that had two or three points. It's clearly a different machine that did it to the one that did this. Does it mean anything? Who knows? Who knows at all? Um, the next, the, I think, the next thing we can do is just to power this thing up, try a try a few tests, and see whether the uh, whether there's actually an MCU in here at all, and if there is, does it work? Well, folks, here we are. It actually seems to work. I've, I've actually been sold a real MCU and not a silicon brick. And here's the evidence. There's, uh, I've got my little blinky program running here. There's nothing like a good blinky to verify that things are working internally. Um, I'll just explain the wiring quickly here. We've got reset here um, pulled up to uh, 5 volts, and we've also got reset going to the USB ASB, ASP programmer for programming this device. We've got VCC here, which is 5 volts. We've got ground here. There's no Normally you would see uh, a crystal oscillator around this point here, this is where the x pins are. But um, the Atmega 8 comes shipped from the factory uh, as a default to run on its own 1 MHz internal oscillator. Now in my programming I've, I've, I've programmed the fuses to bump that up to 8 MHz because that's the, that's the actual speed I will want to run these at, so I wanted to make sure it was going to work at that. These are the, uh, the SPI pins used by the programmer here. Um, we've got an extra couple of uh, voltage, voltage and ground pins on this side that are generally across either side from the uh, equivalent VCC and ground over on the left. And up here I've just got a simple resistor going from port C5, which is on pin 28, up to a white lead, which then goes to ground. Now I've set up a timer internally to count um, at one millisecond um, intervals and trigger an interrupt. The idea there just being to exercise one of the on-chip peripherals. I mean, it's one thing to be able to flash this device and actually program it, but what if what if the peripherals just either just, just are not there? It just could be a bunch of flash inside designed to pass an initial quick test, but it might not actually have an MCU at all. So I decided to use one of the on-chip peripherals to um, run a one millisecond timer to generate the blinky, and it's working. So, so far, so good. Now just as a quick final test before I declare these chips to be good, I thought I'd just make sure that they can actually be clocked externally. So I put in um, an 8 MHz oscillator here across the x pins and uh, a pair of 22 picofarad capacitors just to provide the extra load capacitance. And as you can see, it's there blinking away again. Um, and I, obviously I, I reprogrammed the, um, the fuse bits in this to, um, to make it source its clock externally because the default is to source internally. You have to reprogram the fuses to, to make it use the external clock and you have to reprogram them very carefully because if you get the numbers wrong it's quite possible to brick the uh, chip to the point where you need a high voltage programmer to reset the fuses again. But you can see here it's all good. The, um, the, thing's, the thing's blinking away so I think at this point I can... I can I, confidently say that these are real MCUs. They may be counterfeit. Do such counterfeits exist? I don't know. 
more likely, um, I think, is that they've just been sourced cheaply um, from the end of a run. Perhaps they've been remarked with a different uh, date code that makes them appear newer than they really are, but there's no evidence of that. As I said, I've had this, this thing under the microscope and there is no evidence of anything um, being removed and then re-added. Um, the, the process of, uh, of marking these chips is destructive to the surface. Um, if something had been scraped off and um, a new date code had been re-added, I would see it. So I think these really are just cheap at Mega 8s. I have no idea how they sourced them. Um, they see they appear to be real. I'm happy. Um, I'm going to continue using this um, in good confidence that it actually does work. So finally, to sign off, um, please visit the, my webpage where I've got um, a, a blog entry that describes everything that uh, I've done in this video and, and shows um, the source code to the timer generation here. Um, the timer I'm using to do the Blinky is uh, a millisecond timer. Everybody needs a millisecond timer in their projects. Uh, it's, it's something you can, you can really rarely do without. Um, and I'm using timer zero, the uh, the, um, the weakest timer in terms of capabilities on the um, at Mega 8. I'm always happy when I can find a use for that timer because you can do pretty much nothing else with it. So um, I'll give you the source code uh, to, uh, to generating the millisecond timer and you'll have a use for timer zero. And you can save the other two timers, one and two, um, for more complex jobs in your actual application. So that's all for now. Um, thank you for watching.